Hello, my name is Kirk Kleinholtz. I'm sales manager for Dynon Avionics. And I'm here today in the cockpit of a Vans RV-12 aircraft to talk about our new Skyview system. Now, Skyview is not truly new. It was first introduced in December of 2009. But this year, we're reintroducing Skyview uh, together with our largest ever launch of new features and some optional hardware components that uh, really round out the Skyview system and make it one of the most comprehensive avionics packages for light sport and experimental aircraft. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, our new touch display, a couple of optional panel mounted control modules, and I'll mention some of the new features in this release. I'll encourage you to uh, check out our press releases and refer to our website for a complete list of all the new features and upgrades. First, let me talk about two new optional panel mounted control modules for the Skyview system. The module on the right here is our knob module. It has three knobs which are dedicated to several functions that are otherwise controlled with the two knobs on the Skyview display itself. Each of those knobs can be reassigned to any of several functions. We've chosen those most commonly used and assigned them to this uh, dedicated knob panel. The bottom knob on this panel controls the heading and track bug, which you see moving here on the directional gyro. The top knob is dedicated to the altitude bug and the center knob is used for the barometric pressure setting. The second panel on the left is our autopilot panel. This panel gives direct uh, access to all of the various advanced autopilot functions in the Skyview system. The Skyview display has two separate control menus, a simplified version and an advanced version. And the advanced version in particular has multiple menus necessary to access all the autopilot functions. This autopilot panel gives direct control of all of those functions in one convenient place. Both of these are great additions and optional items for the Skyview system and also both are available in the vertical orientation you see here and also in horizontal layouts. Next I'd like to talk about what is uh, perhaps the showpiece of this latest release and that is the new 10-inch Skyview touch display. Uh, we've implemented Touch in Skyview as another layer of user interface that just makes the system more usable in the cockpit. But we've also taken a design approach that the Touch is a system that works well in smooth air. It's challenging to use in the cockpit in turbulence. So you'll find that Touch adds access to all the features you already know in Skyview, but it takes nothing away. All, all the existing user controls remain in place, the buttons and knobs across the bottom of the display. I'm going to reconfigure my screen for a second to focus on the map. And that's because we designed Touch in Skyview to work just the way you expect it to work based on all your experience with other touch devices like iPads and, and Android phones and such. When I put my finger on the map and drag it, uh, we're panning the map uh, just like in any mapping device you've ever used. Uh, if I uh, touch a specific area. We have an active cursor. In this case, I've highlighted airspace around the airport, or I can select the airport icon itself. In this case, Eugene, I've selected a VOR there. Uh, notice that the two-finger touch also works just like you expect to change the scale of the map, to zoom in and out. Um, now, along the right side of the map, we have several of the info items that are now also touch items, and that is, is the direct to function. When I open touch that, I exp uh, expose the, the direct to dialog. I can make the selection and touch direct to again. The, it makes my selection and uh, the dialog goes away. Other items from the map menu that are commonly used, info for access to all airport information, that is touchable. Here we, and uh, the tabs on this screen are now touchable to select charts, weather, runway information, uh, same as you would otherwise do by using the joystick knob on the sky view. Exiting from that menu, we can also access the familiar nearest list. Uh, and we can uh, uh, scroll up and down by dragging the finger on the list. We can select individual items in the list with touch. Uh, now I'm going to reconfigure the screen for a moment to show the primary flight display element. Several areas here on the PFD are touchable, and they serve to make uh, better access to the bug functions. For example, let me point out the left knob is currently assigned to the heading bug control function. If I touch on the altimeter, uh, 
it will reassign that knob for the altitude function, and now I can adjust the altitude bug. Similarly, if I touch the vertical speed indicator, the knob gets dynamically reassigned to the vertical speed function, and I, here I can change that bug. So several areas on the, on the PFD are touchable. Another one of those is adjacent to the HSI, where we, we identify the navigation source. Touching that area would toggle, the, in this case, toggles that nav source on and off. In an aircraft with multiple sources, that will toggle through all those sources. Now switching back to the map, I want to sh illustrate the numeric keyboard we have. Uh, so if I uh, display the info page, notice here's my airport information for uh, Eugene, Oregon. I can touch the airport ID field and that will bring up a numeric keyboard. And I uh, can now use this to directly enter a discrete airport identifier. I'll enter my home field here, P-A-E, pain field. Uh, there's also a numeric keypad for number entry. Uh, just another of the various uh, touch features. I want to point out that all of the hardware we've talked about today, the touch display and the two optional panel modules, are easily retrofitable to existing Skyview systems. The 10-inch the touch display is the exact same size and form factor as an original Skyview display, and it can be retrofit into the exact same panel cutout, no changes in cables or anything. So those of you that want to add a touch display to your existing Skyview system, it's going to be an easy swap. The two Panel modules require obviously cutting new holes in your panel, but the vi wiring is very straightforward using our standard network cables, uh, easy to do in the field. Vans is hard at work uh, engineering the necessary uh, documentation to make these components all retrofitable to RV12s in the field. And uh, so you'll look forward to that information on their website in the coming weeks. And we expect to start shipping this new hardware in early April. The date is a little bit movable at this point, but uh, all of us at Dynon are hard at work to get these new products out to you. I might have mentioned that the 10.0 software release is going to be our largest release ever of new features in Skyview. And uh, that's too many for me to talk about in today's short video, but I do want to mention one new feature in particular, and that's on the primary flight instruments. Uh, 10.0 will add a new presentation of flight instruments, and that is the six-pack display. By changing your screen layout, you can uh, display the traditional six-pack of analog flight instruments. You can even remove synthetic vision and have just a plain six-pack presentation if you like. We think this is a pretty cool feature. It's going to be of uh, a lot of interest to those that want to practice uh, uh, familiarity with the analog instruments and also flight schools that want to train pilots for this, or just those customers, those pilots that are wanting to ease the transition into new glass panel EFA systems. So again, it's just a one-button touch to change between the six-pack display and our traditional EFAS display. Uh, great new feature in Skyview. So that's just a quick introduction of new Skyview 10.0 software together with uh, some of the new features and hardware. If you're going to be at Sun and Fun, we'll have all our new equipment there at the show for you to get hands-on and, and check it out for yourself. Also, uh, go to our website for details on this 10.0 software update and all the new components. Thanks for joining me.